This is Eagle Al, and today I'll be talking about Saquon Barkley. He's ready to ball out. Also, Nick Sirianni confirmed the truth. Lastly, Dallas Goddard is back. No more Mr. Glass talk, but let's get straight into it. All right, man, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about Nick Sirianni. He spoke with the media. He had a lot to say. The media asked him some questions and they asked him about office and play calling again. And every time I hear him answer this question, I'm still a human. I, I feel so bad. It's Nick Sirianni comes off like a good guy, but he's just not good at calling the offense. But let me play this clip. Offensive game planning. I know that was a really big role of yours in the past. How much does that change with Kellen here? Yeah, you know, um, obviously love going into the offensive game plan meetings and and really had, uh, you know, obviously we're two days into or we've been game plan a little bit longer than that. But, you know, going in there and sitting in there and listening and, and, and contributing, but also being able to step out if I need to, to, to go talk to a player, go, being able to step out and, uh, you know, go talk to Howie about the roster, or being able to step out, go check in on the defense. Um, I find that very freeing, uh, you know, that I'm able to stretch uh, myself to different spots that uh, that I'm needed um, and not have to be hunkered down into, you, you ask Howie, you'd be like, man, I couldn't get a hold, I couldn't see Nick for Monday, Tuesday uh, after the players left. It, it just wasn't a lot of opportunities, but being able to do that is, is really important, but also being able to give my expertise uh, in the offensive room is really important as well. Um, because an offensive game plan is not just particularly the games, you know, the plays that you call. It's also how situations are played out and game management's played out, which at the end of the day is something that I take a lot of pride in, our game management of what, you know, how, I, how we kind of go about that. And Kellen and I have to be on the same page of that game management, of, of those different things. And so... You know, it is it's still really important that I'm in there, um, but it is important that I'm able to stretch out and, and talk to other guys as well. You see, like he's saying, yeah, I'm here and there, but I get to talk to other coordinators and connect with other players. I think in his heart of hearts, he wish he was a better play caller. I really do. Nick Sirianni comes off as a good person. He's definitely a motivator, but he just don't got it with the play calling. Now, a lot of people ask this question. I always think about it when I hear it. What happens is if the Eagles are successful, what if Kellen Moore is the guy? There's only two places I could think of in recent history where these things happen. I don't think Nick Sirianni will get fired, but I think what what would happen is that he'd get moved to somewhere in the front office. I'm not sure where. And he'll be that guy in the front office, and then they'll make Kellen Moore the head coach. I think things like that can happen. The two places I've seen this happen is Tampa Bay with Bruce Arians, but that happened for other reasons because Tom Brady down like Bruce Arians. And this is a totally different sports sport, but the NBA, Brad Stevens with the Boston Celtics, he moved to the front office, and then, you know, they hired their head coach. And they got a ring out of that. So I could see something like that happening with the Eagles if Kellen Moore is really that successful. Because I don't think they should fire Nick Sirianni if we are successful. That just don't make sense. But I could see him be a move to the front office or doing something different within the organization. And they let Kellen Moore just do his thing. I could see things like that happening. Because you don't want to keep bringing in the offensive coordinator at the offensive coordinator because your head coach is not really that good at calling plays. So don't want to do that. And the only way to keep Kellen Moore, if we are successful, you you had to make him a head coach. It's no ifs, ands, or buts about it without moving Nick Sirianni out the way. But to talk about the truth or what Nick Sirianni revealed was the protection thing with Jalen Hurts. But let me play this clip. I think, I think what Jalen said specifically was that he was he was basically told that he didn't have to worry about certain protection stuff because Kelsey handled that. And he said, you know, it, it was that accurate? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, the different guys, again, there's, there's things that happen at the line of scrimmage. Um, there's some teams that, 
it's all, you know, all the quarterback. There's some teams that it's all the center. There's some teams that's a mix. And, you know, um, and so, again, it was, it was, you know, Jalen being able to do some other things uh, at the line of scrimmage and, and Kelsey handling a big portion of it. There's a, yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, what he said is, okay. yeah, what, what he said is 100% true. Now, that clip was interesting because a lot of people was thinking Jalen Hurst was coming up with an excuse. Like, oh, why is he not picking up the blitz, this and that? But a lot of people got to walk back their words now because we don't know if Jalen Hurts is good against the blitz or not. That do leave that question more in limbo because if Jalen Hurts wasn't calling the pass protection at the time, and it was really Jason Kelsey. This is no offense to Jason Kelsey because last year, while it wasn't great, but the year before when we went to the Super Bowl, it was great. So I think it was more of the offensive of play calling than blaming like a Jason Kelsey or Jalen Hurts. But now you really get to see, can Jalen Hurts call his own protection? Do he have it in him to fight against the Blitz or do his thing against the Blitz? So now that thing, that whole thing is in limbo. So we really don't know. Again, how Jalen Hurts will handle the blitz under his play calling as far as what pass protection. We don't know. So we will figure that out as the season go on. I think there's going to be some hiccups here and there because I ain't seen no preseason action. Only so much you can do in practice. I think there will be hiccups here and there, but I think Jalen Hurts, as the season go on, will get better and better with it. Let me know if I'm wrong. Did he cause on pass protections and stuff in college? Maybe he did. I'm not sure. You college guys who watch college all day, every day, let me know. So I'm not sure, but I know working with a Hall of Fame center, yes, the Hall of Fame center is going to call the pass protections. Just is what it is. But now J Jalen Hurts can do his thing. All right, so let's talk about Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley had an interview, I guess, with uh, Howard Eskin. He asked him some questions about Brazil and also like playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. But let me play this clip. Go out there, be locked in, and try try to do whatever we can to come out with a win. And I think everyone's talking about, you know, not saying us, but you know, the questions that are being asked and you see in the media is oh, what's going on there. I look at it as an opportunity. We get to play on something we could do something that no one in the NFL has ever done before. Um, and I'm excited about that. How much are you looking forward to actually playing in a game? Are we okay? <laughs> super excited. Uh, super excited to actually, you know, put on the jersey. Uh, like I said, I've been talking about it all off season, how thankful I am uh, for the Eagles organization from top to bottom to you know, bring him in here. Um, and I'm excited to show the fans what we got. And it's going to be a great game. Uh, I think the NFL did a really good job of scheduling these two teams, uh, two really talented teams, and we know we're going to get the best. So. You gotta come out ready and execute the game plan. Kind of a shame that your family can't. I, I'm not sure whether your family's going to Brazil to uh, watch you play for the Eagles for the first time. I mean, I've been blessed and fortunate enough that six years of my career, I lived in New Jersey, which was an hour away from my family, and now I live 45 minutes away from my family. They've seen a lot of games, um, and they'll be able to watch this one on TV. So it's okay. Sound like a guy that want to prove to the organization and to the fans he was worth the money. He didn't say that out out front, but it's like, yeah, I appreciate how we, Jeffrey, you know, the fans. And, you know, hopefully we put on a show. I think Saquon is going to go off. Because I think if anything's not working in the beginning, you have to hand it off to Saquon. Because I still think our bread and butter is running the ball and using that offensive line. I, I think it is. So you have to revert to that if stuff is not working or we just look discombobulated. So I could see Saquon having a really big game week one, really going off against the Green Bay Packers. So, yes, prove, prove to the Eagles fans and to the front office why you was paid the money. Trust me, I, I think you are. A Green Bay, Brazil game, prime time. Yeah, that, that Saquon type of talk. And, man, as I talk about this, I can't believe it's game week, y'all. Today is Monday. Shout out to the American workers, man. Labor Day. Everybody should have all, but I know life ain't like that. But, man, oh, man, this is the week. This is the week, man. Thursday, it ain't our team, but if you love football, yeah, some football comes on. Then Friday, us, I can't wait. 
Boy, I can't wait, and I can't wait to watch Saquon. But let's get into the last topic, Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard was back at practice today. Actually, everybody, Johnny Wilson, Dallas Goddard, Isaiah Rogers, Jalen Hunt, everybody was available. Everybody. So let's stop the talk, man. I keep telling y'all, in my personal opinion, Eagle Al personal opinion, I don't think Dallas got his injury prone, and I think it's a talking point at this point. There's no way you could look at the two years he got hurt and say, like, you know what? He's injury prone. Washington, remember the Super Bowl year? Grabbed his face mask, dirty hit. Dallas, the dude twisted, jumping it on his arm. Dirty hit. He got hurt. It's not like, oh, it's an ankle sprain or, oh, it's like a Avante Maddox. You, you know, he get these hiccup injuries here and there. They got to miss four, five, six weeks. No, these are literally coming from dirty hits and they are, well, like broken bones, if I'm not mistaken. And then the year last year when he broke his forearm, he was supposed to be out for the season. He still came back what, within like five weeks. That's pretty good. So let's stop the, oh, he's injury prone, this and that. I don't think he's injury prone. He was just a victim of dirty hits. But I, I want to see a healthy season, but he's a big tight end. He's going to take some dirty hits here and there. But hopefully, you know, he can overcome that and stay healthy the whole year, man. Show the lead what Eagle fans see. Like, yo, he can blossom and be that guy. Or well, he is that guy, but the numbers don't show it because he had to miss five, six weeks due to some dirty hitting division rivalry teams. Mind you, I named Washington and Dallas. Like, come on, man. But it is good to see these guys back. Friday, can't wait. But hey, man, what do you think? And how do you feel about the news today? Nick Sirianni revealed the truth about the pass protection and let it be known Jalen Hurts was telling 100% of the truth. Also, Saquon is ready to go off. And again, Dallas Goddard is back. But this is Eagle Al, man. I'm out.